In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In holy baptism, Margaret Coos was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks to you for your loving kindness shown to Margaret and all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Proverbs, the 31st chapter. An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he prays her. Many women have done excellency, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. This is the word of the Lord. 
Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our epistle reading is taken from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. In order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justified, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, will I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth in the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. God has made us his people through our baptism in Christ. Living together in Christ and hope, we confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit.
please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you today from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear friends, it's good to be able to say that. And so we are all friends, amen? amen. All right, and we'll be friends forever with Margaret in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is reigning right now on the throne. And she is there singing these same hymns of glory and praise to him now that we sing right here. Bruce, your family, all of Margaret's friends who are gathered here today and those who will be watching later, welcome to each and every one of you. And I have to tell you that when I received words uh, that uh, Margaret had passed on, Margaret didn't die, she passed on. She went ahead of us to heaven with all of the saints who are gathered around there right now. But when she passed on, the first thing I thought about were the words that the Apostle John wrote in Revelation 14, 13, where he wrote saying, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors for their deeds followed them. I have to tell you, Bruce, that uh, when I first got word that Margaret had passed, I was trying to picture what she was experiencing. And I don't know if you've been doing that as well yourself and the rest of you too. But let me explain to you a, a little bit of what I think she was experiencing and why. And so I'll start with the why and so you indulge me to tell a little story. After I retired from here, um, it was a cruel joke. I thought I was gonna retire. 
but I ended up in a Redeemer Lutheran Church in Nacogdoches as vacancy pastor for a little more than a year. But that was a blessing too, for I met a man there who one day uh, told me that uh, when he was young and he was out riding his motorcycle, he must have been going fast. He said he approached an intersection that had a traffic light, and just as he got to the intersection, an oncoming car made a left-hand turn right in front of him. He hit the car in the side, and he told me that his body flew up over the wires that held the traffic signal and ended up on the ground on the other side. And he said to me, the people who witnessed the accident immediately just covered up his body because they knew he was dead. But as he stood there telling me this, all of a sudden he got nose to nose with me. We weren't wearing masks then. <laughs> and his eyes were as bright as could be and he had this big smile on his face. And he said, but I wasn't dead. He said, I was on my way to heaven. And over the course of that next year, and I, I didn't see him that often because he and his wife lived quite a ways away and they only came once in a while to the worship service. And I could only talk with him for a minute or two maybe before the worship service. Uh, but he would give me snippets of his experience when he went to heaven, when he had his near-death experience as we call them today. And, but the one thing that he kept repeating over and over again was the love. The love that he felt being there, just being in the presence of all of the beauty of heaven. And then he also told me that what really overwhelmed him were all the people who were there to greet him, who were so excited to see him, people he knew and people he didn't know. So I have to tell you that when I received the word that Margaret had passed on, those were the first pictures that went through my mind. What must Margaret be experiencing right now? And the love, the people welcoming her. And I thought I had an idea of who might some, some of those people might be, too. Um, I have to tell you this, when, when I, Dottie and I first came here back in 2004, I was talking with Margaret one day about how excited I was to have learned that my ancestors had come to this country before it was the United States and had built a Lutheran church over in the, in the uh, wilderness of western Pennsylvania, it wasn't before it was Pennsylvania. And uh, so I told her this story, and she stood there with a smile on her face and, you know, listened patiently. And when I finally finished, she uh, started telling me about her ancestors who had been missionaries to the Native Americans here in the United States before it was the United, well, I guess it was the United States then. But uh, so then I listened to her story. And so when I was thinking of who was there to greet Margaret. I am sure that her great-grandfather missionary, her grandfather pastor, and other family members were there to be a part of her welcoming gathering, as well as so many good old friends from Christ Memorial and others who had gotten there ahead of her. And so, so those were the thoughts that I had when uh, I first received word that Margaret had passed on. I have to tell you that in one of Bruce's emails that he sent to me after Margaret had passed, he reminded me that Margaret had been the uh, chairperson of the mission committee here from uh, 2005, which was right after I came, to 2020 for 15 years. And when you wrote that to me, Bruce, I had to, I had to kind of smile because I remembered back working with Margaret uh, on the mission committee. And I have to tell you, missions was really in Margaret's DNA. And I am sure that that was a big part of her family and, and making sure that people heard the good news of Jesus' love and salvation uh, if they had never heard it before. And, uh, and so I thought about all those times that uh, 
that we received these requests for mission support. And I have to tell you, uh, if, if you didn't know this, that Christ Memorial received probably more requests for mission support than I had ever seen. I had pastored several congregations before I got here, and yes, we had received report or you know requests for missions support, but it seemed like here at Christ Memorial we we received more than all of those other churches combined. Now. One of the reasons I think I know is because God knew that Christ Memorial at that time could support many, many mission opportunities. And Pastor Baidawi, you know that you're one. And, uh, and we just thank God for you and for your ministry as well. What a vital ministry that is. 15 years. Wow, that's awesome. But the one thing that I keep hearing in my mind that I heard from Margaret when we were looking at all, all of these requests for mission support, Margaret kept saying to me, they all deserve support. Every one of them. She wanted everybody to hear the good news of Jesus and his salvation through faith in him. And so the mission committee would consider all of the different requests and would approve them all. And we would support all of the different mission opportunities. So thank you, Christ Memorial members as well, because you have all been a big part of that. But that made me think of something else, Bruce, of those who might have benefited from those mission support uh, opportunities who could have already been there to be a part of Margaret's welcoming gathering and that reminded me of one of my favorite old Chris Christian contemporary songs that uh, became popular in the late 1980s if you anybody can remember back that far when we were young and the the words to the song go like this I dreamed I went to heaven you were there with me we walked upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea. We heard the angels singing and someone called your name. I turned and saw this young man. He was smiling as he came. He said, friend, you may not know me now. And then he said, but wait, you used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight. Every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. One day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. Then another man stood before you. He said, remember the time a missionary came to your church. His pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave, and that's why I'm here today. One by one they came, far as the eye could see, each life somehow touched by your generosity. Little things that you had done, sacrifices made, unnoticed on the earth, in heaven now proclaimed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Your friends, uh, that's Margaret's legacy. And that is certainly her present reality right now. You may remember the old joke that I, that I said once in a while, maybe in a sermon. You know, we never see a, a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer. And the whole point of that is it's that, you know, we can't take any of our stuff with us. And so if you've if you got stuff right now, use it. Break it or give it away. And then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Amen? But then I know I've also said in sermons, there is one thing that you can take to heaven. It is people. And that's what Margaret took to heaven throughout her entire life. Is she wanted to make sure that people knew of God's love for us in Jesus. 
so that they could be a part of his banquet celebration forever in his kingdom. What made her that way? Bruce shared with me Margaret's favorite Bible verse, and that was in our epistle reading for this service from Romans chapter 8, verse 26, where the Apostle Paul wrote, saying, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Now, I have to tell you, I've struggled with that verse over the years, especially as Dottie and I have faced trials and even tragedies in our lives, and maybe you have too. But I think that once we understand what the Apostle Paul was really trying to say there, we understand the verse, what he was really saying. So to explain it, um, I just want to say it first that uh, I know I've probably said to you at some time or another that English is not a very precise language. Um, and so when translators would try to translate the Bible from the original language into English, they would have to try to find words that would approximate the original meaning of the, of the Greek words or the Hebrew words that were in the original Bible. But if you speak another language besides English, you know that that's not always easy. That's not always possible. And this is the case with the word that's translated as good here in Romans 8, 26. There are actually two words in the Greek that are in the New Testament, that both of which are translated using the word good in the English. The word in this verse in the Greek that's translated as good is the word agathon, which really means intrinsically good or essentially good. It is not the opposite of bad. That's the other Greek word that Paul did not use in this particular verse. And so to understand what Paul really meant in this verse, we have to look at the context. And to do that, we have to go back to what is now our end of chapter 7 of Romans, where the Apostle Paul wrote what I call the, the most famous tongue twister in all the New Testament, where he writes about why he doesn't do the things he knows he should do, but he does the things that he knows he shouldn't do. And so if, therefore, if he, if he does the things he should, you know what my point. All right? I'm not going to try to say it by memory. I look it up. But even after he talks all about that, then he ends that chapter with this verse, with these words. He says, Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then he begins what is now our chapter 8. You have to remember that when Paul wrote this, it was just one letter. It wasn't divided up into chapters. But then the next sentence he wrote, he says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And in verse 18 of Romans 8, Paul gives us the meaning of that word good in Margaret's favorite verse. For there he writes, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. And then he concludes the whole thought with the verses that were the end of our epistle today, where he wrote saying, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, neither angels nor rulers, neither the present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the good that Paul was writing about in Margaret's favorite verse when he said all things work together for good for those who love God. What is the good? It is simply this, that God loved us so much that he became one of us in the person of Jesus. 
We're about to celebrate his birth. And thank you, all of you who did the work to make our sanctuary here so beautiful today as we get ready to celebrate the incarnation of God in the person of Jesus. Will you allow, indulge me this little thought that when Dottie and I walked in here yesterday and Jeff Nuttall was up here hanging Chrisman's on the tree, my first thought that I was gonna to say to him was, you're doing all of this for us? <laughs> but no, you weren't. <laughs> you were doing this to honor our Savior whose birth we are about to celebrate. He was incarnate, became one of us to do two things. To live a perfect life before God in perfect obedience, which you and I have not done. But then to go to a cross like that one and to pay the penalty for all of those times when we have not done the things we should have done and instead done the things we knew we shouldn't have done. And when he rose three days later from the grave, we received the assurance that all he had promised is true. We are forgiven. We have been reconciled with God. We have peace with God through faith in Jesus forevermore. And so that we would have that faith, he gave us his Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us, as we said at the beginning in the liturgy of the worship service, in baptism, God has made us his own in Jesus Christ. And Margaret received that faith in her baptism, and she had that faith grow in her her entire life. And the fruit of that faith we saw throughout her life as she served God in all of her mission opportunities. Now, the people living in Paul's time, they needed to know this good that I just shared with you. Because in their lives, many of them were persecuted for their faith in Jesus. Many of them were put to death for their faith in Jesus. And so for them to hear from the Apostle Paul the good that in Jesus, God loves me. In Jesus, God forgives me. In Jesus, God has promised to give me a home with him forevermore. This is what they held on to. This is the good, the good news that Margaret wanted all people to know and to hear. I said this to Bruce before the worship service. So now you can all hear it. I said to him, I said, Bruce, what I say up here, I don't only apply to Margaret, but to you too. Because you and Margaret were such a special team here at Christ Memorial. And for those, I'm sure most of you here, if not all know it, but uh, Bruce and Margaret and Joanne Scase, who's still here, we're charter members of Christ Memorial 55 years ago, right? 55, 1965. You wanted to start a Lutheran Christian congregation here so that people moving into this developing part of West Houston could hear that same good news, that same gospel, that God loves you in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So I say, Bruce, thank you because the thanks goes to you too, as well as to Margaret. And to all of you who are gathered here and have served for so many years as well. Margaret's now at her rest. The rest that the Apostle John wrote about in Revelation. She's enjoying her rest. She is still very much alive. She's on the heaven side of Jesus' kingdom and all of us who are gathered here and all who will watch later, we're still on the earth side of Jesus' kingdom. So we still have work to do, amen? While we're still here. And if we want to know what that work looks like, just remember Margaret. Remember her words to me so many times. They all 
need to hear the gospel. If we can just keep that as our focus, because that's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, then not only will we honor Jesus with the rest of our lives, like Margaret did throughout her life, but what a joy it will be when it's our turn to cross over and see Margaret as one of our welcoming gathering when we get to the other side too, Bruce, and all of you. May that be your peace. May that be your comfort. May that be your hope in this hour. Amen? Amen. Will you please stand for the prayers? Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the peace that you give through faith in Jesus. We thank you that you gave Margaret Coons this faith and that she was raised in, in a Christian family that had served you for generations. And so she knew what it meant to be a disciple. She knew what it meant to share your love with people who needed to hear it. And we thank you for the faith that you gave to her. We thank you for her using her faith to share your love with so many and to be so committed, so determined to do so. And we thank you for the rest that she now enjoys. May she enjoy each and every moment until we can all be there standing with her side by side. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we just pray that you'll be with Bruce and all of his family, that you'll comfort them with the peace that passes all human understanding. May they all be confident that Margaret is at peace with you. She is enjoying her eternal life with you already. And that through faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that same home, that same love, that same peace awaits them as well. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Father, for all who, who need to hear your, your good news of Jesus and his love. We pray that you will use us as your disciples, as your church, to share the good news of Jesus with people who so desperately need it. And Lord, you know our world needs it now more than ever. There is so much hurt. There's so much anger. We pray that you will help us uh, to speak words of peace and words of hope to people who need it everywhere. Use us for your glory, just like you used Margaret. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we just pray that you'll be with all who are struggling with health issues, not just coronavirus, but cancer and, and with other illnesses and issues of health. We just pray, Father, that you hold your hand of healing upon all of them, that you will restore bodies to wholeness. But most of all, Father, we pray that you will grant to each and every person your peace, your strength, your hope, which can only come from you and which cannot be taken away from anyone. Lord, in your mercy, for all these prayers, we pray in our Lord and Savior, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
does seek to work us woe, his craft and power are grim, and on with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confine our striving? Jesus, it is he, Lord Sabaoth, his name, from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to us, of darkness grim we tremble not for him his rage we can endure for lo his doom is sure one little word shall fail him the No thanks to them abideth. The Spirit and the gifts are ours through Him who with us us. Let goods and kindred go. This mortal life also, the body they. God's truth abideth still, His kingdom is forever. Thank you, Sue. We continue. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord, amen.
thank you all for coming. There will be a reception in the fellowship hall immediately after this worship service. So if you would please join Bruce and his family there for the, uh, the fellowship time, that would be wonderful. Thank you all for coming. Great to see you again.